Yukamukad Amrita Drava Samyatam Devata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Mahora Hora Sika Bhubi Babuka Nigama Kaupa Taror Galitam Palam Shukamukadam Rita Drava Samyatam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Mahora Hora Shika Bhubi Babuka Anybody like to chant? Manages anybody? Nigama the Vedic literature. Kaupatara the desire tree. Galitam fully matured. Palam fruit. Shuka Srila Sugadev Goswami. The original speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mukat from the lips of Amrita, nectar, drava, semi-solid and soft and therefore easily swallowable. Samyutam perfect in all respects. Pibata, do relish it. Bhagavatam, the book dealing in the science of the eternal relationship with the Lord. Rasam, juice, that which is relishable. Alayam, until liberation, or even in a liberated condition. Moho, always. Aho, O, Rasika, those who are full in the knowledge of mellows. Bhuvi, on the earth. Babuka, expert and thoughtful. Translation, O expert and thoughtful men. Right? All you men here. Expert and thoughtful. Relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In the previous two slokas, it has been definitely proved that the Srimad Bhagavatam is a sublime literature which surpasses all other Vedic scriptures due to its transcendental qualities. It is transcendental to all mundane activities and mundane knowledge. In this sloka, it is stated that Srimad Bhagavatam is not only a superior literature, but is the ripened fruit of all Vedic literature. In other words, it is the cream of all Vedic knowledge. Considering all this, patient and submissive hearing is definitely essential. With great respect and attention, 
One should receive the message and lessons imparted by the Srimad Bhagavatam. We'll just go through the purport, paragraph by paragraph. It's quite a long paragraph, a long purport. Maybe it will take a couple of days. So tomorrow probably also, is it? No? Huh? Tomorrow is a different verse. Tomorrow we can do the same verse. They'll continue this verse. Yeah? Okay, so Srila Prabhupada is describing to us about the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Vedas are like a tree and the Srimad Bhagavatam is a fruit. It's a fruit which is a valuable part of the tree. Right? You have a mango tree. We know we go to uh, Amgat and many mango trees are there. You go now, they'll be very careful because now it's the mango season. There must be a lot of mangoes growing there in those trees. And mangoes are valuable. You get a good price in the market. So when there's no fruit, no problem. <laughs> no problem. But when the fruits are there, it's valuable. It's the fruit which is valuable. Srimad Bhagavatam is the fruit of the Vedic literature. The Vedas itself is like the tree, but it's the Srimad Bhagavatam which is the important part of the Vedic literature. So Prabhupada is describing this, how we must have the proper mood to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, proper respect, and attention, we heard yesterday also, Sushru Shro, right? We have to hear with the proper culture, carefully. So, that is required, submissive hearing. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam described, Prabhupada says, uh, transcendental, of course, it's transcendental to all mundane knowledge, all other mundane literature because it's dealing simply with the topics of the Supreme Lord. As we pointed out also in the previous verse yesterday, that Srimad Bhagavatam doesn't touch on anything else but the glories of the Supreme Lord and His incarnations and His energies and different pastimes. Other literature, you know, there will be so many other things there. But the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's all nectar. Right? It's described here, that fruit which is easily digestible, thoroughly relishable and easily digestible. The fruit today, you know, the mangoes, you know, you get a big skin and a big stone and there's a bit of pulp in between. But the Srimad Bhagavatam is not like that. It's not that kind of fruit. The Srimad Bhagavatam is, it's all nectar, it's all thoroughly relishable and easily digestible. So, of course we may feel, oh I don't know, creation, I don't like to hear all that Shristi Tattva, the topics of creation. But for the devotees, the more we purify our heart, the more we take pleasure in hearing also even Shristi Tattva how the Lord does the work of creation. It's an important part of the Lord's pastimes. We don't just want to hear Rasa Lila. We want to hear everything from the beginning. So the Srimad Bhagavatam describes the pastimes of the Lord from the beginning. Janmadhyasya yato nabhaya. Janmadhyasya. In other words, Janma is the creation and then Adi it includes also the maintenance and the destruction. All the phases of this material cosmic manifestation, it's all described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But more than that, it goes on to describe also the nature of the Lord and His pastimes in the spiritual world. We get full information, everything is here in the Srimad Bhagavatam. We just have to hear it carefully from the beginning. Srila Prabhupada goes on, the Vedas 
The Vedas are compared to the desire tree because they contain all things knowable by man. They deal with mundane necessities as well as spiritual realization. The Vedas contain regulated principles of knowledge covering social, political, religious, economic, military, medicinal, chemical, physical, and metaphysical subject matter, and all that may be necessary to keep the body and soul together. Above and beyond all this are specific directions for our spiritual realization. Regulated knowledge involves a gradual raising of the living entity to the spiritual platform. And the highest spiritual realization is knowledge that the personality of Godhead is the reservoir of all spiritual tastes or rasas. So the Vedic literature cover many topics, as Srila Prabhupada describes there covering many different things in relation to the material world and how to live in this world. We sometimes compare the Vedas to like a, a handbook, how we have to live and how we have to regulate our activities. Not too much sense gratification, not too little, just the proper amount. Everything is prescribed in the Vedic literature for the healthy life of mankind in the material world. Prabhupada describes the Upanishads as the first steps in God-realization. The Upanishads are also part of the Vedic literature. In the Upanishads, we don't find a lot of information about God, but it's the first steps in God-realization, making us aware that there is some personality, there is something there, there is something beyond the cosmic manifestation. So the Vedic literature, they come from the Lord Himself. They are called Shruti. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the Smriti, right? There are two branches of knowledge, the Shruti, the Smriti. Shruti means the hearing process. So, Tene Brahma Ridayadi Kaviye. We heard in the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vedic knowledge was imparted into the heart of Brahma was imparted into the heart of Brahma, right? So, that this is the shru, Shruti. Vedas is like, Prabhupada said, like the mother, hearing from the mother, tells everything about the father. And so the Vedic literature can lead us on the right path to God-realization. But the Srimad Bhagavatam is more important. There are a class of people who only read Shruti and they won't hear Shmiti. They won't accept Smriti. They say, no, 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 this man-made, man not perfect. They say, only the Shruti, only the Vedas. So therefore, sometimes Prabhupada, when he quotes something from the Vedas, he'll say, in the Shruti mantras, it is stated. You'll often see Shruti mantras. Prabhupada means Prabhupada's quoting from the Vedas. Because there's a class of people, the Vedantists, the you know those people here in Bengal, Ramakrishna, right? You know, they're, they're the Vedantists and they like to speak the Shruti. They're not fond, so much fond of the Smriti, but they like to promote the, the Brahman. The, they like to speak the Upanishads. We like to speak Bhagavad Gita, the Vedantists, the Advaitavadis, they won't accept Bhagavad Gita. They will only accept the Vedas. But Rupa Goswami said, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatriki Vidim Vinam Aikantiki Harer Bhakti Utpataye Bhakaupate. The devotional service should be performed according to the Shruti, the Smriti, the Puranas, the Itihasas. And if it's not according to these scriptures, then then it's a disturbance to society, simply creates a disturbance. So we want to hear the Smriti. Actually, in this age, the Smriti is even more important than the Shruti. Because in the Shruti, it's very hard to know 
what is actually being explained and what is being told. It's all, you know, so much poetry and so many hidden meanings, very difficult for people to actually understand. Therefore, in Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma has said, Vedishu Durlabham Adurlabham Atma Bhakto. That very difficult to know Krishna, Govinda, from the Vedas. But from the devotee, you can know very quickly, very powerfully, very easily. So, Adurlabham Atma Bhakto. It's not so difficult if you get the association of devotees. So, Srimad Bhagavatam is our opportunity to associate with Srila Vyasadeva and all the commentators on Srimad Bhagavatam. And of course also Srila Prabhupada, our own founder Acharya, who is so kindly presented the words of the Acharyas along with his own realizations in this subject matter. Okay. Uh, every living every living entity beginning from Brahma, the firstborn living being within the material world, down to the insignificant ant, desires to relish some sort of taste derived from sense perception. These sensual pleasures are techni technically called rasas. Such rasas are of different varieties. In the revealed scriptures, the following 12 rasas are mentioned or uh, are enumerated. Rudra, anger. Adbhuta, wonder. Sringara, conjugal love. Hashya, comedy. Veera, chivalry. Daya, mercy. Dasya, servitorship. Sakya, fraternity. Bayanaka, horror, Vibhatsa, shock, Shanta, neutrality, and Vatsauya, parenthood. The sum total of all these rasas is called affection or love. Primarily, such signs of love are manifested in adoration, service, friendship, paternal affection and conjugal love. And when these five are absent, love is present indirectly in anger, wonder, comedy, chivalry, tear, shock and so on. For example, when a man is in love with a woman, the rasa is called conjugal love. But when such love affairs are disturbed, there may be wonder, anger, shock, or even horror. Sometimes love affairs between two persons culminate in ghastly murder scenes. Such rasas are displayed between man and man and between animal and animal. There is no possibility of an exchange of ras between a man and an animal or between a man and any other species of living being within the material world. The rasas are exchanged between members of the same species. But as far as the spirit souls are concerned, they are one qualitatively with the Supreme Lord. Therefore, the rasas were originally exchanged between the spiritual living being and the spiritual whole, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The spiritual exchange or rasa is fully exhibited in spiritual existence between living beings and the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is therefore described in the Shruti mantras, Vedic hymns, as the fountainhead of all rasas. When one associates with the Supreme Lord 
and exchanges one's constitutional wrath with the Lord, then the living being is actually happy. These Shruti mantras indicate that every living being has, has the quality, has, has, the, has, the, has the constitutional position which is endowed with a particular type of rasa to be exchanged with the personality of Godhead. In the liberated condition only, this primary rasa is experienced in full. In the material existence, the rasa is experienced in the perverted form, which is temporary. And thus, the rasas of the material world are exhibited in the material form of rudra, anger, and so on. Therefore, one who attains full knowledge of these different rasas, which are the basic principles of activities, can understand the false representations of the original rasas which are reflected in the material world. The learned scholar seeks to relish the real rasa in the spiritual form. In the beginning, he desires to become one with the supreme. Thus, less intelligent transcendentalists cannot go beyond this conception of becoming one with the spirit whole without knowing of the different rasas. So Srila Prabhupada is explaining to us the basic principles of this rasa tattva, the science of the relationship with the Lord. In the material world, we experience these rasas in a perverted form. But in the spiritual world, in the original form, the relationships are there with the Lord. And basically there are five primary rasas. Shanta, neutrality, then Dasya, servitude, then Sakya, friendship, Vatsalya, parenthood, and Madhurya rasa, conjugal love. So those are the five primary rasas. And the subject, the subject of rasa is very, very important actually. The whole subject matter of rasa is described for us in the nectar of devotion or Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which Srila Prabhupada described as the handbook for the devotees. How much it's a handbook will depend on how much we have understanding of the rasa of the spiritual world. So we have to understand how we are all spiritual particles in quality one with the Lord. And we have a natural desire to enjoy relationships. Everyone wants to have some kind of loving relationship. If it's not man and woman, we see in the material world, if, if you know, somebody maybe, they're not married, they, then they get a dog, or they have a cat, some kind of pet, someone to be their companion in the material world. Because it's the nature of life that we want companionship, we, we want activities, and with company, with different companionship, there will be activities. So, Krishna consciousness describes the highest activities, spiritual activities, the activities of the spiritual world. Here in the material world, we know that the activities which we have in this world always cause us so many problems. We have so many difficulties and anxieties and different experiences. 
we, 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 we have trying to keep a family together is a great challenge in the material world. The children grow up, they want to go be independent. Husband and wife, they quarrel with each other, then they will divorce. Like the, this is the nature of material rasas, that it's so temporary and it's a cause of so much problems. But spiritual rasas are based on pure love. And we want to cultivate our rasa with Krishna. Prabhupada explains here how in the, you cannot have rasa between different species. It must be humans have rasas with other humans. Although people may take a dog or a cat for their pet, they cannot actually relate to it like you can a person. You know, you're not going to argue with your dog. You're not going to laugh and joke with your dog. <laughs> it's a different kind of, ex very limited exchange. So the real rasa is between the same species. Two dogs together, they can have rasa together. We see the dogs here in the dam, uh, they like company with each other. And sometimes the do other dog comes and then it creates a different mood. And you hear the barking that, why are you coming here? This is our place, get out. You know, this is the dog rasa. And people also, we have our different rasas. We want to understand the, the nature of this rasa, Prabhupada describes in, the nec in his preface to the nectar of devotion that the rasas of the material world are chapala sukha. They don't give eternal happiness, but they give very temporary happiness, flickering pleasure. And another feature of the rasa of the material world is boga tiaga. Boga, tiaga. Boga, we want to enjoy. And tiaga, we want to renounce. Right? Boga, you, you get a relationship, you find a companion. You may be the man, may be the woman. You're having the relationship. You're enjoying. And then something goes wrong. And then, oh, I hate that person. I never want to see them again. I, you just want to get away. I'm... I'm don't talk to me about that person again. I don't want to hear the name. You know, the tiag, right? Renunciation. And then what happens after the renunciation? Then again, the boga. Then you find some other companion. Uh, this material rasa. It's flickering pleasure and it's with enjoyment and renunciation. Enjoyment and renunciation. This is the rasa of the material world. But in the spiritual world, rasa is eternal. And the happiness is ever increasing more and more. And we, all living entities, not only we, but all living entities have some particular rasa with Krishna. This is actual liberation. Muktir hidvanyatarupam swarupena vastita. That actual liberation is to understand our swarup, our spiritual form. What position we have in the material world. Of course, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers, they all cultivated the mood of the gopis, of braja, and that gopi bhav, they wanted that kind of rasa. But not that everyone has that rasa. There were also many great Vaishnavas, they cultivate that mood of the gopis, sakyaras. Not the, not, not the gopas rather than the gopis, the gopas the cowherd boys, 
Lord Nityananda's associates, they were all in the mood of cowherd boys. And Lord Nityananda would go with his group and many of them, they had flutes and they had the sticks of the cowherd boys, you know, they have a big stick with them for herding the cow and they have the bells and the different things which the, the rope to tie up the cows and things. The, this is the mood of the cowherd boys and Lord Nityananda with his associates, they were all in that mood of cowherd boys, they were enjoying that mellow being with, not everybody likes to be gopi, right? The gopi, why you want to be like these women? No, be a cowherd boy, be a, a cowherd boy. So anyway, different rasas, somebody else cultivates vatsavya ras, be like Mother Yashoda or be like Nanda Maharaj. Think of Krishna as your child and worship the deity like your child. Prabhupada writes in one purport how there was one couple here in Bengal and they had no son. They had no son, so they took the deity of Krishna. They had a deity of Lord Krishna and they arranged the marriage of Lord Krishna. Somehow they got the deity married. I don't know who they got him married to, but anyway, they got him married and they had a marriage ceremony. And eventually the couple died. And when the couple died, the deity, Lord Krishna in the deity form, did the lash rites. He performed the, the you know, the cremation. So, this is, a, this is an example of rasa, you see, you take Krishna like that, you have that kind of relationship with Krishna. You can be the parent of Krishna, take Krishna to be your child. Some, sometimes, Prabhupada would sometimes tell a woman, take Krishna to be your husband. He's the best husband. He will never leave you. You have a husband in the material world, he'll disappoint you in so many ways, give you so many difficulties, and eventually he's going to die anyway. But if you take Krishna for your husband, he's the best husband. So like that, Rukmini, of course that was her mood when she was supposed to be married to Sishupal, she wrote to Lord Krishna, telling Lord Krishna that if I don't get you for a husband in this life, I'm prepared to do austerities for many lifetimes until I can get, achieve you for a husband. So this is rasa. We have, we, we all thrive on these different exchanges and we want to cultivate this mood of loving exchange with Krishna. Serving the deities is one manner, just like, of course it will reflect which particular deity you serve and the manner in which you serve. We see like in, in Pushti Mark, Pushti Mark, they worship L Lord Krishna as a child and their worship of the, of the deity is done like that, offering him milk sweet, and everything is very easily digestible. The food should be very easily digestible. Simple things, sweets especially, many different milk sweets will be offered to the deity. And they will also have nice, like swing, put, we're going to have, also have Julan Yatra very soon. So they will also have many festivals like that, put the deity on the swing and many different ways of according to the mood in which you worship the deity. And so, it's going to vary, of course, how like maybe the mood in worshipping Panchatattva would be a, a little different from the mood in worshipping the gopis. It depends. It will depend also on the devotee who is doing the worship. Different devotees will have different moods in performing their service. But we have to understand, we, have, we all have some particular rasa with Krishna. 
And what is that rasa? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told us, Jiver Swarupahai Nitya Krishna Das. That the con the, by nature we are all servants of Krishna. Sometimes people will ask, what is your rasa with Krishna? You can tell them, I am the servant of Krishna. Not directly the servant, but many times the servant. Gopi Bhartu Padakamala or Dasa Das Das Anu Das. Right? We're many, not direct, but we serve Krishna through the other devotees. So this is our position. This is the position of all living entities. That we are all meant to be servants of Krishna. And as we go on serving Krishna, gradually Krishna will reveal to us what particular mood of devotion Krishna wants us to, uh, to have. Does he want us to be a servant? Like in Vrindavan, Krishna's servants are Raktak and Patrak. And Krishna also has Daruka in Dwarka, who is his chariot driver. So they are Krishna's servants. But then you have friends, and you have different kinds of friends. You have some friends who, worship, who still give respect. You know, you may, be, you may have someone who is a friend, but he's not on your level. Just like Krishna and Uddhava. Now, Uddhava had a, a kind of friendly relationship with Krishna. But at the same time, Uddhava was always very respectful to Krishna. He would never sit on the same level as Krishna. If they gave Uddhava a seat, they put Krishna in a seat and then gave a seat the same height to Uddhava, Uddhava would sit on the floor. If they gave Krishna a cushion, Uddhava would sit on the floor. He would not sit on the same height, on the same level as Krishna. He showed that kind of respect for Lord Krishna. But you've got other friends of Krishna, like Sudama and Sridham and Subal, the cowherd boys, and how they're playing with Krishna, and they're fighting with Krishna, and they're wrestling with Krishna, and they're crawling on his back, and their feet are touching his back, like that, because they're intimate friends. They're on the same level with Krishna, equal with him. So that kind of friendship is there. That's a different kind of rasa from what Uddhava has with Krishna. And then above that, you have parental rasa. Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, Devaki and Vasudev. And we see also Putana. People, devotees like Putana coming in her Rakshasi form, coming to be, but Krishna takes her back to the spiritual world to be one of his nurses there. Of course, she's not like Mother Yashoda or, or Devaki, but she does have that Vatsalya Ras. But she's kept some distance away from Krishna. She's one of the nurses there making arrangements for Krishna. And then conjugal love, the conjugal love rasa is shown by Krishna's wives in Dwarka and the goddesses of fortune. There are many goddesses of fortune all serving Krishna in the Vaikuntha. And then also the gopis of Braja. There also, of course, in conjugal love. And there's Parakiyaras and Swakiyaras. Swakiyaras, married, married life. And without marriage. The gopis, they enjoy Parakiyaras without the marriage. But the, the wives in Dwarka, that's Swakiyara. Married life. So different rasas, different exchanges with Krishna. Everyone has some rasa with Krishna. We are all his parts and parcels. Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhutta Sanatana. Mama Shastani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati. All living entities are my eternal parts and parcels. But 
we are struggling with the material nature due to conditioned life we're struggling why are we struggling with the material nature that was described earlier in the Bhagavad Gita apariyamitas tvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhuta mahabaho yaidam daryate jagat this is why we're struggling with the material nature. Krishna is saying, beside this material nature, O Arjun, there is another nature of mine, another energy, prakriti of mine, which are all living entities. Right? Apariyamitasvanyam prakritim vidime param. We are prakriti. We are not purusha. Apariyamitasvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhuta mahabaho yayidam jaryate We are trying to take control over the material nature. We are trying to exploit this material energy. We are thinking we are the purusha. We are, we are not recognizing our actual position as a servant. And that's the problem. That's why we're struggling with the material nature. But when we become more Krishna conscious and recognize our position as the servants of the Lord, then we can go on to purify our consciousness. And one day Krishna will reveal to us what is actually our rasa with him how we can actually serve him in the spiritual world. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Any comments? Janani Vas Prabhu? Yes Prabhu? Question? Why is Rasa so secret? Well, it's, it's not that it's secret, it's just that you have to be qualified. Right? If you're properly qualified, then Krishna will reveal it. The problem is people are not qualified. But when we become qualified, then it will be known to us. Uh, Sometimes people do this, they go to this, uh, they take this uh, prana, what is it? Sita Pranali Mantra. They go to some guru and they pay the money and he says, I'll tell you what your rasa is. And just pay me the money, you know. And you go to the guru and you pay him money and he tells you, oh, you are a peacock in the spiritual world, you know. And he gives you some mantra to chant. So they, they get this Siddha, Siddha Pranali mantra. This is bogus. This is not bona fide. This is nonsense. This is condemned by Srila Prabhupada. But some people do this. They think it's so cheap. They think they can get be told their rasa by the guru. Just pay the money to him, give him some daikshin, and he'll tell you your rasa, and give you some mantra to chant so you can develop the mood of this rasa. Nonsense. Don't be cheated. Don't be taken in by that. Some people, and they're so eager. Prabhupada said, for the cheaters, there's a cheated. If you want to be cheated, you'll find a cheater. That's it. The cheaters and the cheated. You want to be cheated, you'll find somebody He'll cheat you, he'll give you your mantra, he'll tell you some rasa. Oh, nonsense. What does it mean if we're not qualified? It has no meaning. It's ridiculous. Nonsense. So this is not approved by any of the acharyas. No, you want to know a rasa? It will come by realization, by service. Constant absorption in the service of Krishna, then it will be revealed.
Okay, so we will stop here. Thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Hare Krishna.